Welcome to the Raj Cassette Show, number one podcast in Dubai, and this is the number one episode of the number one podcast in Dubai. I'll go, a lot going on. Gang, who is coming to my birthday party this weekend, make sure you stick around because as soon as we come back from the intro credits, we're going to be talking about my birthday party, which is coming up. It's going to be absolutely epic, as well as a whole bunch of other news and cool stuff. Joining me on the episode, as always, is the party planner of the year. Yeah, yeah. Vic Majaria. Just call me J-Lo. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why? I don't know. She did some party planner movie, wedding planning movie or something. Uh, or did she do that in your head? <laughs> <laughs> she planned my wedding, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, this is a packed, packed, packed episode. Yes. Re I really enjoyed this one a lot. Mm. It's so good. You're going to love it. And then back back from uh, being horizontal for three days, he is the real life Grateful Dead. Uh, he is, uh -huh. he's on the show and he smashed it today. Well done, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? And thank you. Why were you laid out for three days? Because I got my booster. booster yeah, uh, that's what we're going to call it. Yeah, because we don't want the algorithm to mess my, it up. I got my booster and I completely killed me, basically. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man. Damn shame. Yeah. Damn shame. I can relate. I, I yeah. two, two, two times I had the symptoms and uh, it's no joking matter. So thank mm. you for, for resting up and coming back. I super appreciate it. I'll be there for the party. Yes, he'll be there for the party and um, we're going to be, this is our penultimate episode. This is the last episode that we're probably going to get into a whole bunch of like news topics. So soak mm -hmm. them all up whilst they're there. We talk about not only the birthday, but also a bunch of crypto talk. Pharrell, M, Snoop all getting involved. Big story with Binance and Cristiano Ronaldo. Super, we cover a lot on that point of view. Also TikTok. Yeah, TikTok big, releasing pictures. Yep. That, Real that, threat that you just saw this morning. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. awesome. We talked about Snoop's comedy special. Oh my god, whole bunch mm. of music, that whole bunch of music talk as well on this one as well. Yeah, so great. For me, the the best episode of the Raj Set Show Algo that we've ever done, and because it's so good an episode, make sure that before we get into it, because you're going to be so paralyzed with engagement, hit the notification bell right now on YouTube so you can get this episode. As soon as it comes out, subscribe. Also, YouTube numbers are going up. I really appreciate it. Comments and likes are also super appreciated. Five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast. And if you're watching or listening on Spotify, please give us a five-star rating and review. Alex, you ready to run it? Yeah. Run the music. All right, let's get into it. There's really one big subject we need to talk about first and foremost, because this podcast is going to go out to everybody on the guest list of the hottest party in Dubai, uh, the 21 year anniversary of my birthdays, which is crazy. Uh, my birthday party, yeah, Saturday, 25th, starting at 9 p.m., One Life Cafe. Shout out to our friends at One Life Cafe that have been oh so helpful, uh, letting us turn the venue upside down and making our own boiler room style event. Just made sure that the boiler room has a star next to it and the word boiler room style or boiler room-ish, as ish, we've yeah. called it. Uh, we also have 1800 Weirdo on board yeah. mm -hmm. making NFTs, so that's incredible. We have anywhere between 350 to 400 people on the guest list yep. by the time the doors open, which we should time this podcast <laughs> <laughs> so, so that it goes out at a time where um, you know, that's hopefully not a problem. And the reason why we do that, guys, is, you know, the, the firstly, the venue holds 300, mm. but we have to oversubscribe slightly because on the day someone's taxi doesn't show up, someone could get sick or whatever. So there's a natural drop off in this city that's anywhere between 40 and 60%, depending on the kind of event that you do. But if you are coming to the event, we are so excited to have you. You should hopefully have this podcast in your inbox and maybe you're even listening to it as you're getting ready for the party. But Get ready because we are going to have one of the most insane parties ever. Whistles have arrived. Mm. A lot of hardware is arriving tonight. We've basically got what looks like a tank's worth of, you know, audio and video, uh, audio and audio and uh, lighting equipment coming in tonight. Uh, it's a big spec event, Vic. You've been working on it since I've been. Uh, you started working on this party even when I wasn't here when I was in London. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. It's like it's weird, right? Because it's it's. It's a big spec, but it's also not a big spec. And what I mean by that is we're going to have, you know, it's going to be rammed. It's going to be busy. It's going to be full of great people. But we've actually purposely left, although there's a really good spread of audio and light, we've kind of left it quite warehousey and quite industrially mm. because it fits the aesthetic of the venue as well. Yeah. And the boiler room-ish vibe. Yeah. So, so I think 
you know, the expectation is that it's it's not this glamorous party, but it's just going to be fun. Yeah. Great music, you and me are DJing. People are always amazing. Yeah. And we, we've set up the, the space for music, drinks, and partying. Yeah. That, that's what it's set up for, you know? It's a real back to basics party. Nothing that Dubai's ever experienced before. A lot of people heading away the following week, especially a lot of folks that are like, you know, parents and teachers. There's going to be, uh, you know, quite a lot of people traveling the week after. And so this is the biggest party of the year. It's my birthday, which has always been epic. And it's uh, going to be kind of like an end of season closer for, for really a miraculous season in Dubai. Mm. For those of you who are listening overseas, Dubai is quite seasonal. Things do tend to cool down, ironically, here in the summer, whereas most parts of Europe get really, really busy and exciting and they cool down because it gets 50 degrees, it gets super hot. So people travel and, you know, that means that really a lot of people are going to be chilling from next mm -hmm. week. I am going to Bali on Tuesday. Shout out to all the people that have already reached out and said that they're in the city. So I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time with them after I've had three to four days sleep at uh, Michael Francis Resort. Oh, mm. awesome. Nice. Yeah. How did you book it in the end? Yeah, yeah. Soul Shout Shine. Out to Michael, man. Yeah, the... Yeah. Uh, Big up to the team over there. They've they've arranged something really special. I'll get there and I'll, you know, we'll talk from okay. there next week. But um, yeah, it looks like there's like a, a suite that's been hooked up and a bunch of different bits and pieces. So I'm really be looking dope. forward to that and looking forward to the sleep that comes with that as well. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be incredible, you know. One last one last huge blowout. And I was going through my phone the other day, and obviously, as you know, in a previous episode we talked about the fact that I was in Manchester and I was stood outside Font Bar, which is where I did my 21st birthday, mm -hmm. which I think is the first gig of mine that you came to, right? And um, I was already... Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And I was already popping at that point in mm. Manchester. Like I already done my ticket seller days. Or I did my flyer boy days, ticket seller days, had my own parties days. And then by the time you got there, there was... We were doing... I was doing like my own exclusive venues for my birthdays. It was really... It was really like small, to be frank. We're probably talking about... How many people would have been there? 50, 60? Well, you think I can remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vic was at, Vic was at the bar. Yeah. Hardcore. Oh. In those days, Vic used to really drink a lot. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's Just true, we did, yeah. 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 I mean, we're 21 you, years yeah. old. Yeah. Uni days, right? 21 yeah. years old, basic phones, basic internet. I mean, you're outside a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's true. No, but I, I remember the party. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I couldn't tell you how many people were there. But yeah, maybe like 50, 60, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, but it was a lot more. of fun. We've spoken about that party on the podcast before. Yeah. It's, 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 it was definitely good. But the people were good. You mm. know? That's good. But I think, I think actually, the, here's what's important. It's the people are always going to be good because, you know, you surround yourself with good people. But actually, it's just energy and music. Mm. That, that's been a really important factor in your parties, our parties, mm. any kind of event that we do or we've been involved in. Just the energy and, and, and you know, you talk about whistles. The whistles is always, it's funny. The whistles has always been this like point of stress for you specifically, like whistles, mm. horns. Are we going to get them? Where are we going to get them from? Are they going to come in time? You know, but it's little things like that that make that energy. Mm. And then of course, the music is always going to be amazing. So, yeah, we should actually just bulk by whistles for the rest of our lives. We, we, you, you said could. that on Why not? a number of occasions. Yeah. I mean, it's basically every year that said. Yeah, it's because the but stress is just trying to get them in time. <laughs> Actually, you know, we've got a delivery and we no point in talking about it in case it doesn't come, but we've got a massive delivery coming from the UK today. And if it does land here, then it's going to take the party to a whole other level. But if it doesn't, we won't mention it so that nobody notices that it's not missing. But the party is going to be at a different level anyway because the inside of One Life is so beautiful. I mean, yeah. I, I, the, what I really love about One Life is that we, uh, we are already paying customers of One Life. Like mm. I actually go there yeah to eat as often as I can. I think I first went there like in my recent relationship with One Life as far as like being a customer was with our friend Greg Stockton. Yeah. Shout out to him. We're going to miss him at the birthday party. He's just moved to Cape Town. But he, we, you know, we went there, we had lunch. It was incredible. The coffee's incredible. The staff are incredible. Boy, their staff are, they're just like super good, clean energy people. And so like, yeah, it was just, it was just amazing. That as soon as we went upstairs, I, I don't know if me and you went upstairs the first time and as soon as I looked around and I saw the mixing board and I saw the speakers, I was like, this is happening one day. And then we met, Nad, met, met Najib, the owner, and he's a, just a cool cat, our age, mm. hip hop kid. And just like, it, it's, it feels good. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Shout out to Farai and the whole team, Anthony, that have been helping us and 
letting us go in there late nights, midnight to look at the venue, look at it with the blinds down, mm -hmm. look at it with daytime, nighttime. Lights so, on, lights off, the whole lot. So good, man. So good. So listen, party of the year. If you've received this in your email and you're on the guest list, then do not miss out. Get there early between nine and 10. One life of Ray kindly giving everybody a welcome drink. Uh, we're going on till three in the morning. It's just going to be exceptional. Dubai scene, nothing like it. I think that's all we need to say about that. That's it. Yeah. And of the last 21 years, how many? I've maybe done half of them. I've done I've thrown a birthday party. Only? Don't yeah, do it every I mean, year because COVID and oh, you know fair, different things yeah, like that. Yeah. Traveling. Yeah, or yeah. Fair. Whatever. When I was in Bali, <coughs> excuse me. When I was in Bali a few years ago, I was just chilling. Mm -hmm, Couldn't yeah. do it. So like you know, but when I'm when I'm in a major city. I'll typically try to do something. Mm. And so, yeah, I'm just super. And also, I'm super grateful because this, if you look at, if you, if Algo was like a one year thing, mm. if you imagine where we were as a, like, as a society and as a city and as a company and as a crew last year, we were in a very different place. Like Alex wasn't around, flying around wasn't as much of an option. Mm -hmm. Our client mix was different. Our service mix was different. You couldn't go outside the same way mm. and do the kind of things. So like, it's been a really miraculous year. Like in the last year, like, Reconnecting with Gary, probably Scoop as well, but maybe not. I can't remember. Uh, we, I don't think we saw him in Dubai, but we obviously know, produced a yeah. show. Mm. Uh, stuff that we've been doing with Sugar Hill Gang. Um, it's just been really amazing. And we've it's had some cool, brilliant yeah. people run through our creative content programs and kind of graduate those and go, go on to do incredible stuff. Shout out to Tahir Majithia, yeah. who was here yesterday. He's just passed 120,000 across all of his social media platforms. He's skyrocketing. Flying, man. Flying. Yeah, he's killing it, man. And actually, the conversation that we had yesterday, if that comes into fruition, to his about to go to a whole other level in terms of like creator. Like, he already is one rung ahead of his peers. Mm -hmm. Like, he's one noticeable step above everybody else. But this could put him like in a different different playing field altogether. So keep an eye on Tahir Majithia's Tahir Instagram. to the moon. <laughs> Tahir to the moon, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so that's that's where we're at at the moment. No out and about in Dubai, but we're going to make up for it this weekend. Yep. What else have we got to talk about? Big news stories this week. Yeah, so actually you, you found one this yeah. morning. Um, Do you yeah, ahead? this morning. So TikTok has now taken on Instagram basically with uh, being able to post pictures. Which is a call that we made and have been making for quite yeah. some time, yeah. which is that if everybody steals, well, Facebook steals from everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one yeah. big counter jack move by yeah. TikTok to be able to have images. And we've said, we've just said explicitly, if TikTok if plays yeah. the image game, it gets it's very over. scary. Yeah. And only two <laughs> weeks ago did Instagram say, we're now going to let you pin posts. So yeah. yeah, you've now got that option. As opposed to, we've just straight nicked this from TikTok, F them. Now TikTok's like, okay, you're not the only guy who knows mm. how to take a steal on somebody. Yeah. And you, I mean, we saw it. Yeah, like they've done it well. I've, yeah, they've done it. I, like what what I said to you, they've done a much better job moving from video to picture than yeah. Instagram did going from picture to video. Mm. Pictures to reels. Pictures, pictures to, to reels. reels. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. talk us about some of the features so that you I, noticed. So I've only seen one creator do it. His name's Demas. D E M A S. Um, he does photography and things. Um, and it's basically same music as um normal TikTok, so the music plays except you can swipe through pictures and if you don't choose to swipe it'll go through the pictures every like three or five seconds i saw this oh sorry to interrupt sorry you, you mean it slides like along what, it will the carousel go, it will go from one picture to the other automatically if you don't touch it the car what you're saying is the yeah, carousel yeah, yeah, yeah. is by default a slideshow slide with yeah. the option to manually, manually, go manually do it and you can and zoom in how long can that be can it be three minutes I have not. I, I have not. I haven't what tested it. Yeah. yeah, to be confirmed. I mean, I mean, from from the two posts I saw him do with pictures, they were in between three to five seconds. Right. I misunderstood what you said this morning. So, mm. so it actually does a slideshow. It itself. will do it alone. Yeah. So imagine if you had a Jeez. carousel, but it's nine by sixteen portrait mode, full screen. Yeah. And if you don't swipe, it's it will it will auto swipe. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that you noticed this morning, Alex, was you pinched in, didn't you? Yeah, on the picture and the resolution it. was beautiful yeah it was it was good yeah. but i guess this guy's Honestly. a high quality photographer yeah i'm, I'm right? sure so also yeah that's gonna help no but i think also as well like in the behind the scenes tiktok probably made a, com a decision about the compression yeah i'm sure they gave yes. him yeah i'm sure they gave this creator as a flagship creator super 
like super privileges when it comes to the quality of his but files. I've, I've also seen more high quality videos on TikTok than I have on Instagram. Really? Yeah. So what, sure. what do you think that means for TikTok, in your opinion? <sighs> Who knows? But the thing is, TikTok's still so early on. Like, you never know what can happen. What if regulations come in place from different countries about, like, um, privacy of TikTok? Maybe that's the reason why they're innovating, because they're trying to build that yep. addiction, the groundswell. Yeah. Yeah. Because then if a country turns around and says, you know what it is? Smart, Alex. It's good, it's good that you, it was a good, good point that you made. It's uh, <laughs> if if you if you get uh, a user addiction, mm -hmm. you can step in and you can break that, like India mm. did, right? But what happened at that stage when India cut off TikTok, which was just all around this hype around China and everything, is that there's no economic addiction. Mm. Mm. Now all of a sudden, if a mature market says we're not going to work with TikTok anymore, and TikTok is a reason why a lot of SMEs, small to medium enterprises, are actually selling products then you're gonna get SME federations and people saying, hey, how can you take this away from us? Because if you switched off Instagram tomorrow, regardless of where the servers are held, whether it's US or China, there's gonna be an economic impact, a, a really mm -hmm. tangible yeah. one. And so I think t what TikTok's doing is they're saying, okay, let's go feature rich, let's be really great and out hustle our competitors and get more and more people on there. So we're gonna get a lot of consumer, consumer innovation and then what's gonna happen next is gonna be like commercial innovation. It's going to be like click out of TikTok mm. and buy this and do this and do that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Let's wait and see. I think yeah. I think it's interesting. It's, yeah, it is interesting. What, what if TikTok innovates on micropayments and subscriptions better than Instagram, Instagram? did? I, I've only seen I think, one person. I think that's inevitable. You think so? Yeah, because... I, I think so, yeah. The, the features are the features, right? Ultimately, yeah. whether it be a photo or click out or payments or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. It's just who does it better. Yeah. Yeah. And TikTok so far, from an engineering point of view, is running circles around Instagram. Mm. They're doing everything better. Like you you've seen one creator, and of course they would have given him some advantages and all that I'm kind of sure. stuff. Mm. But you've seen one creator post photos and you're already like, it's better than the way Instagram started life. And you're in yeah. their sweet spot, eighteen years yeah, old, yeah. and that's your thing. Yeah, exactly. You you could you could yeah. be at eighteen, a, a a decade long customer, the same way that we were when face when Facebook mm -hmm. first came out. So I think an issue will be the privacy, though, because uh, there's how, how so? there's no privacy behind TikTok. But like, explain that. What do you mean, like an issue? Like, how's that going to TikTok is based uh, TikTok. What if um countries start putting regulations on what um privacy settings of TikTok? Mm. Because uh, the, the reason why they do that is if the TikTok algorithm starts influencing how society is yeah. shaped, like if TikTok says you've got to have, you know, pancakes with four tablespoons of salt inside <laughs> and people start dying of heart disease, then that's bad. But ironically, this thing about privacy is very, very interesting because most people, the majority of people go on social media platforms to be public. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're yeah. not putting anything that's which is true. volatile for you from a privacy point of view, then everything you put out there is under the broad intention of being public. And so people don't necessarily think about like front of house privacy and back of house privacy. Like how's my data and my algorithm being thought of? They're just like, how many people know that I'm now doing cupcakes in my mm -hmm. bakery? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's so true. It's, it's very interesting though. And it's nice. It's not, it's not a death blow either way, but it's mm -hmm. definitely interesting to see TikTok do that. And I think this now is going to be the time that I embrace TikTok because I was late to Facebook you know, people used to cuss me out like, why don't you come on Facebook? Because I was like, no, it's just a bunch of overseas people talking to each other and staying in touch. I was late to Instagram as well, admittedly. I mean, I was early on. The, I'm early on all the platforms. I'll register as soon as they come out, but I won't invest in it. And as mm. you guys know, I don't invest much in TikTok. But yeah. now with the algorithm, and we all know as well, guys that are listening, part of our creative content community, that when a platform launches a new feature, you should lean into that feature mm -hmm. and use it as much as possible to get reach. So use it as much as possible. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm away from Tuesday for a month. And you're in you're in a place where you can take a lot of amazing oh, photos. Oh, forget about yeah. it. Right? Yeah. Just post so, a bunch so of use pictures. It. <laughs> yeah. Use it because yeah. our Instagram is not going to come. I mean, we've, we've had this conversation about your algorithm on Instagram and how many people aren't seeing your posts. Oh, my like, you God. Know, talking about, you know, talking about your party or whatever it is. No, and, let's talk about that. Right? That's important. Like, I want to we'll, say we'll, that. We'll, we'll loop back to it for sure. Yeah. Um, but 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 Instagram's not giving you what you need, whether it be video stories, reels, or or photos, whatever it is, right? So 
I think, and you know, we've discussed this a bunch of times about publishing micros on TikTok and stuff like that. Now's the time to do it. And plus, photos are low. Uh, it's a it's a low barrier to entry. Entry, right? It's just it's easy. Yeah. For people to post photos. Anybody can video. take a picture and just upload well, that's it. A good, good point. This could be the comeback of photos. Because if TikTok's saying we, we're, TikTok we're going to prioritize within, them. Uh, photos within TikTok. Because Instagram, like, they don't... They're nah, not. but what's going to happen? I think Instagram are going to, like, have a, have a benefit from it. Because if people are posting on TikTok, they're going to be like, oh, we'll just post on Instagram as well. It, that's mm, a fairly natural it, thing it, for people to do. And then Instagram will also push And then Instagram will probably more. change what they do with yeah. photos. With pictures, yeah, it's a logical yeah, yeah, point. Yeah. The reason why video boosted on Instagram was because of because TikTok. Of TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, and sorry, so now right. TikTok does that. And so now Instagram is going to be like, well... Do we want to have a notoriously bad reputation when it comes to image distribution? Mm. Like it's like, it's, you know, have you ever watched like those intense table tennis matches where they're like, oh, where get they're faster just and oh, harder yeah, and whatever? Yeah, yeah. That's basically what it is. Yeah. They're like, hit the ball back. It's like, all right, we're going to do photos yeah. like this way. And, you know, it's like that. Both of you guys are on fire today. I thought this was going to be a really sh- <laughs> crappy <laughs> episode of the show. <laughs> Maybe we just peaked too early as well. Because <laughs> when I'm looking at our notes, we ain't got much else to speak about. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 we're good. no, no, very, very, very good points. You know, I'm going to push this episode on a lot of people because, you know, there's a lot of content strategy here uh, that you can be implementing and, and I will be implementing too. But to Vic's point as well about the algorithm, I just want to say this, and I'm going to put this out as a separate clip. And we, let's do this, even if we need to put this clip out before the rest of the podcast goes out. So... I have done my level best. I've probably tried to invite, you know, I've invited the whole My Friends, Your Friends community, 4,000 people to the birthday party on Saturday. I have WhatsApped hundreds of people, DM'd hundreds of people, and I'm still remembering people that I'm super close to on my WhatsApp and stuff like that today that I'm still messaging one-on-one. No disrespect to everybody uh, because the reason why I, I can't WhatsApp everybody and message everybody is because my hope is that email does the job and the majority of people that I know in the city in Dubai are on the My Friends, Your Friends database. However, I was talking to my girl Omo, as I was saying to you before, who Mm -hmm. I'm mad cool with and she comes to the parties and she brings so much good energy. And even she, when I was texting her, was like, I said, you know about the party? And she was like, nope. And then she found it in her junk mail or in her, you know, promotional mail. And so, you know, there's a lot of people in the city of Dubai that don't know about it. What we are doing is Vic is building a CRM for me, which is going to allow me to put every single contact I have, four and a half thousand people, maybe, well, it's probably closer to seven gross, but maybe mm-hmm. four to five thousand people net. And then once we've got that, we will have better mailing, better WhatsApp, better SMS. We're going to do it. We're going to figure all that out this summer so that every time mm-hmm. we do something, we can invite all these wonderful people to our community. And there'll be an update on that probably in September, right? Yeah. Realistically. Yeah, September's right. Yeah, also, I was sat with Pally the other day, our friend, an entrepreneur here in the city, and he was showing me HubSpot, and that was, he goes, the free version is really powerful. He's been using it for years across all of his businesses, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know, maybe there's a relationship between HubSpot and Notion, but this is all stuff that we could explore. There, 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 is, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. there definitely is, and HubSpot is definitely a contender yeah. to plug Beautiful. into Notion. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, but MailChimp is like letting us down in terms of how many inbox inboxes mm-hmm. it's getting to, but it might not be MailChimp permissions have changed and yeah, Google, sure, Google's yeah, changed yeah, yeah. a lot in the last like yeah. you know three to five years in terms of how it separates and categorizes emails and things like that so so yeah that that's going to have a huge effect on okay. on who sees it um, so moving on to a big week for NFTs yep. this week so we had NFT in NYC or NFT NYC NFT this NYC. week mm-hmm. there's a couple of big announcements that came out of that but let's start with the big Binance announcement. Yeah. So they've partnered with uh, Ronaldo for an NFT push. You guys saw that? Yeah. Yeah. I think so you sent it to me actually. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, so I, I've not followed the story. I just saw the post on Binance's page. Mm. Yeah. Which was very kind of gritty. But what? What? What exactly is he going to be doing for them? Because he signed a big deal here with Talabat. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Here in Dubai, and he's got a lot of like billboards around the city. Talabat, for those of you outside Dubai, is a you know grocery and food delivery service app. Uh, what's he doing with what's he doing with Binance? So there's not there's not loads and loads of information mm-hmm. yet, but essentially um, it's a multi year NFT partnership with Ronaldo and Binance, and Binance will launch um, a global promotion aiming to give Ronaldo's fans an introduction to Web three with a compelling entry point into the world of NFTs. So they're going to create a series of NFT collections for sale exclusively on the Binance NFT platform. 
and it'll be released later this year and designs created in collaboration with Ronaldo. And so it's an exclusive project, an NFT project between them two. And they say it's going to have experiences that come with the NFTs and things like that. Okay, so let's see how much Alex has learned. Spin that forward now. Spin out the business case. What are they gonna, what they're going to do? How's it going to manifest? From from people buying the NFTs? Or what, what the, how's the project going to manifest? Like, how do you think it's going to actually enter the real world, people's wallets, people's crypto I mean, wallets? I mean, they'll put it on, they'll create NFTs, put it on their, um, the Binance NFT. Yeah, why area? Binance and not Coinbase? Because Binance is the one who's with Ronaldo. But Binance has got, Probably it's got bigger budgets, bigger budget, and what's and happening right got now? Be- a Columbus, better global yeah. spread. Yeah, yeah. For so sure. Finance is in markets that other people aren't in, and yeah. Cristiano is a arguably, global brand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Most followed Instagram. Is he? Start. Yeah, ar- arguably one of the biggest brands. Yeah, so I mean, he's, he's most yeah. followed Instagram. Yeah, so he's like a Michael Instagram, Jordan yeah. style character where yeah. he's got like crazy. He's yeah, probably everybody. got feverish fans all over the place, like 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 superstars did in the eighties and stuff. What he, else? He's just gonna help bring a lot of light. From everything, basically all of his followers to Web3 and Binance. Yeah. What about delivery? Um, I mean, that depends. Binance have to do a really good job on that, on what they present and make sure there's value to the people who are buying it so that it doesn't have a bad representation on Binance maybe in the future. I think we're, we're also going to see a, a gallery war. I mm. think we'll see a gallery war between Instagram uh, Coinbase and Binance in terms of who's got the hottest gallery and that gallery will become a pseudo social network mm. and so if you can only buy and display certain Ronaldo NFTs only on the Binance gallery then that will become like a new web3 social media platform and if there's comments which we've seen already on mm. Coinbase yeah. Coinbase stepped out with a gallery that has social media web2 style characteristics about it so that could be quite interesting. And also the number one thing here as well, of course, the, the most elementary thing is image and likeness, yeah. mm. which is that his NFTs and his face and his likeness is only going to be, at least from a legal perspective, licensed. And what's interesting about Binance is it's a Chinese company, right? At its core. Y- yeah. Yes. Uh, so I think Sha- so. What's his name? Shang, uh, Shang Zhao, I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So CZ. She's CZ, yeah. yeah. So, C- Shang so Peng Zhao. Shang Peng Zhao, yeah. Yeah, and so typically what's going to happen is when you've got like licensing and image and likeness in the West, if it gets copied in China, there's only so much you can do about it. Like There's only mm. so much legal jurisdiction yeah. you've got. But if a Chinese company owns a global license and then there's no US or Western company that can steal from them because A, it's just not the done thing in that direction typically. And if it is the done thing, then China can use local jurisdiction in the US and the UK to counter that. So China can own a global license and sue people in their own territory. Whereas if you own a global license and you're in the West, you can't and China duplicates you, you can't mm, sue them in their territory. Yeah. So from a chess, this goes above just like an endorsement architecturally at the highest level, like a, a cross border level when it comes to IP. They, they've got a huge advantage and I wonder how many more times they can do this. Oh, they, they'll be able to do it. I mean, they've bagged the biggest guy to do it. Yeah, really. like, yeah literally. Right, there, there's almost no one, specifically in sports, but it, like across multiple categories, bigger than Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't Ronaldo. think there's any sports athlete that's more known than Cristiano Ronaldo. And not only that, he's less so now, but for many, many years, he was equally loved and hate, hated. Mm. And then most of that hate moved to love. Like people adore this guy. Does he still actually play football? Guy. Yeah. Sorry. Before. Yeah, he plays. Uh, he plays for like what? That he Italian plays for team. who? Some Ronaldo? Italian team. Yeah. No, I don't know. he plays for Manchester United. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's gone back to Manchester <laughs> United. Still? Hey, oh, yeah, he he's gone back, back to Manchester yeah. United. But yeah. what's really interesting is that, um, uh, well, yeah. So look, the the utility is going to be huge. Like. Anything that they can offer on the back of this is yeah, really massive. Mm-hmm. Games, tickets, season tickets, meet and greets. You know, there's mm-hmm. so much stuff that he's involved in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's involved in like charities and all it's this kind so of so much. It's mad. Mm. Well, there's going to be signed, a lot of Signed memorabilia, everything. There's so much. There's so much there for him. Yeah. And Binance has had a good 
few weeks as well with announcements, you know, like this Ronaldo deal. They, I don't know if we managed to end up talking about this last week or the week before, but they closed $500 million fund mm. on both three projects. I think we might have mentioned I it briefly. I can't remember. They I closed it, what, they raised or they invested? Their own fund. So they've, they've raised created their own fund, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's nothing for them. No, but it's, um, I think, I don't know if this is the only one that they've done. But mm. there's that they've in hi- like here what are they going to invest in? Do you know? Don't know yet. Yeah, don't know. Just a bunch of Web three projects. <laughs> um, they partnered with Majid Alpha Tame to do some bits. Still don't know all the detail around that. Mm. They did the first um, crypto powered tour with the weekend. Really? What? Yeah. There's some. I there's like there's a that. whole bunch of announcements that they've been making. They're just like bang, 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 bang. Like they're really not, you know, like. Considering what the market is right now, they're not slowing down. Well, it's really interesting. I didn't know any of those yeah, stories. Yeah. So, well, I think I think we had them, but we just ended up talking about them in the last couple of weeks. We need an SOP very, for sure. No, no, we it's, have been, it's been in there. <laughs> we we haven't recorded. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. So no, but that's interesting because then if you look at if you look at the fact that it's so funny. Sorry, <laughs> I'm reading it off last week's SOP. Oh so, really? Yeah, but <laughs> well, we didn't end up talking about it because we were quick. We did a rush run. Okay, so th- what's interesting about that then is if if social platforms are going to start having elements of crypto and fintech in them like instagram is doing with its galleries and nft galleries and f- new fintech and crypto platforms are going to have elements of social media like uh who did i just mention coinbase is doing mm-hmm. then there's going to be a there's going to be an in- industry wide convergence and actually at the moment you see like social media players stealing features from each other mm. whereas you might actually find sectors absorbing whole sectors like you might find that the social network of choice is binance in five years because look at robin hood how much how much social media and gamification dynamics did robin hood use this is something that's worth keeping an eye on and in fact as well etoro does the same in etoro's yes, adverts yeah. they say if you you know follow certain yeah. other eToro users, their moves, and you can even just lock in and track their moves. So this is something to absolutely watch. What wow, this it? might be the best ever episode of Alga we've was ever it's had. It's <laughs> interesting because you know you spoke about the the Web two like social media dynamics in Coinbase. Mm. That's ultimately what it is. Because think about this move for Binance. It's 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 a huge customer acquisition strategy. That's essentially what it is, right? Also incredibly right? true. So, so now when they acquire the customers, not every single customer is going to be, you know, I'm going to buy the latest NFT mm. or invest in the latest um, coin or, you know, anything like that at all, the latest cryptocurrency. So what else can they offer them to keep them engaged on the platforms mm. and then therefore invest more and so on and so forth. So it's interesting. It's really, really, it's really interesting. And you know what was, what's even crazier about that is a very, very good point. But to take it, to add to it as well, at the moment, NFTs are fundamentally media and content assets. Mm. So what if you could just release a whole film as an NFT? Like at the moment, we do buy once, yeah. consume all, right? On, on Netflix and stuff like that. But what if Binance was to release an exclusive piece of content, which is an NFT, so now we're not just talking about them going into the social media space, but we're talking about them going into the media space Mm -hmm. because now if Binance launch an app on your smart TV and they say anybody who is either an owner of a Ronaldo NFT will get access to you know because Ronaldo could launch his own uh, sportsman of the year awards right the Cristiano awards right it's very possible it's it's not impossible it's not impossible so let's say he has like the boxing category the baseball category the American football category of course the soccer category snooker this that whatever he can then have the Cristiano awards and that, that award show might only be streamed on Binance for anybody who is either signed up to Binance, owns a Cristiano Ronaldo NFT, X, X, Y, Z, Z. So now you start talking about like a subscription service because when we talk about utility, we talk about membership, we talk about ownership. And, the, and, and actually what's even crazier about that, I'll tell you a story. As you know, Netflix is trying to deal with this challenge 
of people sharing passwords. Yeah. Mm. And because the decision was made at a time where Netflix was not prioritizing it to their own admittance, mm -hmm. and they were just doing customer acquisition, customer yeah. acquisition. Now, retrospectively, they've gone back and they've been like, your one leg on this chair is really weak. One of our foundations in our business, which is one user, one license, is wrong. A week ago, Spotify messaged me through the app and said, hey, you're this kind of user, would you kindly fill in this questionnaire? I always say yes. Because if you extrapolate the questions they're asking you, it lets you know what it is that makes the platform nervous. And the whole thing was focused around password sharing and pricing. So now they're talking about mm -hmm. how much would you play, what would you expect for your free Spotify? What would you expect for a single license? A dual license, so you plus one other. Mm -hmm. And then a family license, which is you plus, let's say, four. four yeah. All people living at the same residence. And I don't know why the residence matters to Netflix and it matters to um, Entertainer here, uh, which is a loyalty, uh, a, an app, a consumer app here, retail app. And then it also matters to Spotify. So I screen grabbed all of those questions that they were asking me, or at least the bulk of them, and I'm going to tweet them out. But that's another thing that's happening. And I'm telling you, just based on this conversation alone, we are absolutely going to enter, enter a different world when it comes to social media. And if Web3 is the the nuts and bolts that sit underneath it, there's a real good chance that after all this craziness and crypto pricing and all this kind of like, this is the awkward part of Web3's puberty. This is where like the prettiness has cooled down and now the acne's kind of kicked in a little bit. But once we get through this stage and we look at like industry sector level convergence, yeah, this is, this is gonna be super real. Do you know what's also crazy about what you're saying? Right now, there's, you know, there's only a handful of social media platforms that everyone kind of relies on to basically go out to everybody. When I say everybody, mm -hmm. their followers and whatever reach they get from the algorithms, mm -hmm. which is which is just like luck of the draw. But in in this scenario where it's focused around with Web3 is the nuts and bolts, let's say finance is a social media platform, I don't think they're gonna have to worry about algorithm because the the people that you're gonna be talking to is based on a shared like ownership of Cristiano Ronaldo's NFTs. So you don't have to worry about algorithm. It's like, well, there's a thousand people that own, you know, this set of, this series of NFTs or, you know, one of these series of NFTs. They're the people I'm talking to about Cristiano mm -hmm. Ronaldo. So there's no like challenge with algorithm and mm -hmm. trying to fight it and battle it and try and figure it out and hack it and all that. You can do that on Instagram, fine, just do that, whatever. But on these sort of platforms, whatever the shape they take in the future, I don't think that's going to be an issue. So if I've got a Cristiano Ronaldo one and I've got a Pharrell one and I've got a this one and a that one and you've got a Pharrell one, I'm only going to be talking to you, to you or like yeah. talking. You, when I say talking, I mean like whatever that interaction is about that series of NFTs, let's say it's Pharrell, be like, right, well, you, you and a hundred other people, anything around that world is just to them. But you know what? You know why that is, right? And this goes back to our problem with trying to get the word out about my birthday party, is that when you own an NFT, underneath every NFT is a smart contract, yeah. and a contract mm -hmm. is what is a series of two-way obligations. So if we were to have everybody in the my friends, your friends community connected through some sort of social platform or com whatever the Web three version of email is, Gmail can't step in between and say messages for Raj's birthday party have to go to spam or promotions. There's a contractual obligation that if I, as a user, signed up with Gmail, the NFT version, to deliver me Raj Katech's party updates and you don't, you then mm. the platform's in breach Breaking of contract. contract. Yeah. So you, we're gonna be in a stage, and this is one thing I'm looking forward to when it comes to NFT, is the removal of the algorithm, which is if you mm. sign up with me, I can guarantee that I can get you my information to a certain place in your app. Now, mm -hmm. whether you check it, whether you're on your honeymoon, whether you're, yeah. but that's, a, that's, that's the different. human yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you actually go to but the mailbox in the front of your garden, yeah. open it and pull your mail out? That's different. But it's gonna reach you. Yeah. But it's gonna reach it's like, you. It's like an intranet. It's like a company intranet, it almost. Is. It's a, uh, it is, it is. It's, it's yeah, intranet, extranet, for sure. Give me that. Yeah. Do you know what an internet yeah. is? Nope. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Google it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, cool. Good. All right. Well, that, that, was, that was interesting. Yeah, that was, that was good. Cool. Well, we're done now. I no, think we've good, peaked. Good. Definitely peaked on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, well, but I hope like, you both haven't peaked. Yeah. No, 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 for <laughs> sure. But like coming out of um, the NFT stuff, NFT NYC. So I didn't see a lot. I mean, I've seen people like post stuff and 
what yeah. they're doing, a lot of parties and whatnot. But uh, a couple of big things came out. So Snoop and Eminem at Ape Fest. Just now. Yeah, the video yeah. just came out yeah, just now. Just dropped. Talib Kweli, shout out to him, just dropped a clip. And it's uh, Snoop and M at the end of their show. It looks like they did a live show for Ape Fest. Mm, yeah. At the end of it, ran a music video on the screen, on stage. And it is for a song that we just played. <sighs> Couldn't even tell. Oh, it was from from the D to LBC, which always to me is a red flag. So the D is obviously Detroit, Detroit. LBC is Long Beach. Um, and it's a collaboration record. I guess Snoop and M haven't really individually, they might have collaborated on Dre projects, but they haven't necessarily collaborated together on a single track. And it is honestly as bad as you'd expect it to be. Like we played it once before we started recording the show. Um, it feels like a, it feels like a, brand mailing also well, feels a bit rushed yeah it feels it rushed feels it feels rushed, rushed for sure feels ma- it's sound, like, sounds terrible yeah, it's, been mastered. Mastered. it's not like they spent a lot of time and like put like a lot of thought no and it. this is de- definitely no diss to like M yeah or, it's not a Snoop, diss it's just but what it feels like to me is three different records it feels like a production like an instrumental snoops a, a snoop verse and an eminem verse mm. that have just been like mashed together no, because Snoop mm. rhymes like M on the album, so yeah, he's just, the, I'm I not d- on the I track. Don't, I, don't, I don't like that at all. It's uh, Snoop's voice is way too low for that kind yeah. of track, and it, the track is aimed towards M, which is a rapidly rap kind of track. Eminem is once again rapping about green goods, which he which just makes no sense when he does that because he openly doesn't consume yeah. green goods, mm. right? And so he's talking about that, and and that's kind of. That is one of the big problems with M is that when he talks about pills and green goods, he's he's openly said he's overcome addiction. He's not mm-hmm. consumed this. He's been sober for this many years. So he breaks his own authentic loop. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when rappers do, aren't authentic, it's like, oh, well, you're talking about consuming these items for shock value, but you're in your mid, mid to late 40s and you're not actually doing it. And also kids don't relate to talking about these items yeah. the way that you do. No. So it's like it's just kind of like a bit, a bit lame, and it's also got kind of like a rushed. See, the problem is, many years ago, before you were born, probably Alex, there was a movie out called Space Jam, and there was it was an animated movie, and mm-hmm. there was yeah. records in there that were just brilliant, just brilliant records, and that. they made sense with the movie, yeah. and they were integrated. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now, it feels rushed. The only time that I'd seen a really good integration is. Um, damn near a decade ago when Pharrell did um, Happy for the Minions movie. Really, yeah. What's it called? Despi- Despicable, Despicable Me. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So like that was incredible. But like this is rushed. It's like Bored Ape came up with a huge bag. They said, we'll pay for a record. We'll give you your money. Mm-hmm. We'll give you your royalties. We'll give you a video. You can include your Bored Apes. We'll give you a live show, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it's not two dope MCs getting into... Uh, getting into just just rhyming together and on our content recommendations we'll talk about yeah. when it, when Snoop is just rhyming do you know what I mean but we'll come back to that but you know what it's interesting because you say it's rushed everything about this world is rushed at the moment the whole web3 mm. nft world, everything is rushed everything feels like it's like let's just go let's get something let's just do something and then there's not enough i don't feel like there's enough thought put into you know what it could mean in 3 or 5 years time i'm talking about like collabs and things like that everything just feels like oh yeah let's just this person's doing nfts okay let's just get them involved because they've got a name they've got a brand and they're interested in nfts and it'll bring other people in because Mm -hmm. they like future or they like amy schumer or they like snoop or they like you know it's just it's all just feels like a bit patchy and a bit rushed there's no like it's almost like there's no integrity in it is it and it's a huge missed opportunity music yeah it's a huge missed opportunity yeah it's sad because if you look at like like dealer lifestyle and stuff like that. Like that was a lifestyle that existed in the streets. And then albums came out that were a reflection of people that were living that life. And there was anthems. We talked about this the other day. There was a record that I played you, um, Burner Boy, yeah. Yeah. Right? And then you've got uh, Punjabi MC's Beware of the Boys record. There are certain moments that forever will attach themselves to a certain movement, like Mm. a groundswell Mm. in society or a type of art form. And no one's come out with that that record for like people that are now web three people are nerds and it's not as if you can make a cool record about them, but there's definitely an opportunity to, to do it right. And M and Snoop could have produced the record that 
people that are early on Web3 will listen to in 25 years time exactly. and be like, yeah. yo, do you remember at Ape Fest when they dropped this record and we still listen to it 20 years later? Both of them have the God-given talent and access to production to make a record and music video like that. And you're right, it just feels a bit patchy. It patchy, and yeah, that, that, I think you've expressed it better. That's my point. It's like, they're not thinking about the future. It's just like, they're not going to be listening to this in three years time, two years time, one yeah. year time. Mm. And, and also what's was really disappointing and i think you said who else was on the bill you said uh little baby was little on baby there, right? I saw as well. so you could take a young artist and do that and do what they've done and it'd be like all right well it's just a young guy yeah. just, you know whatever but snoop and m have got 20 30 years behind them and classics and they're still relevant to the youth mm -hmm. right like yeah. snoop is going to be relevant to everyone at every age in all parts of the world because mm. he's just that guy and m just f somehow figures his way and kind of stays relevant mm. doesn't though i don't know that's man. my point I, I know i think young people still follow him and like it i think recognize recognizing he, he him and relevance his, is different mm, i don't think he's true, relevant today everybody know, recognizes think, him but not everybody well okay so okay fair yeah. Let, let's take that he could make himself relevant if this was done properly I don't think he's got the personality to make himself relevant. I think in in, in, in the MTV the era, in in the MTV era where we were all high off Beavis and Butthead and Shock Value, and you were talking about Jackass before, mm. in that era, he was the musical version of yeah. that. He was the he was the trashy kid. He was the extreme kid. He was saying with his lyrics what the Jackass guys were doing with their stunts, mm. effectively yeah, in the fair. celebrity world. And now in a world where you just open up your Instagram and in three minutes of scrolling, you'll see 20 videos that are more extreme than what happens with Jackass. For real, you yeah, become these. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about also like black people getting shot by cops yeah. in America. Like there's stuff that is just more troubling. Actual real, like, real, real stuff. Real yeah. stuff like that makes you feel like society has to change as opposed to some guy getting like, an ice cream catapulted at him or so, you know, just some, something dumb like that. Like this, we as human beings are so bombarded with such, so much awful stuff uh, on social media that this, the shock value of Eminem being like, I'm a, you know, we, I can't know. I don't want to say the don't, lyrics don't, don't, because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah. we're obviously on Dubai podcast, but like, it just doesn't feel relevant to me anymore. And I love M. Like I was there for the first concert. I was there for the first tour, met him. It was brilliant. Met Proof, just brilliant, brilliant MC. But like, I just don't think he's, he's, he's aged as well. Especially the other day when I was on radio in London and Kish paid, Kish, Kish Meister played um, a most deaf and uh, Taleb record. And that was as good as anything they've yeah, ever done. And yeah. I was like, I don't know, man. But, but I don't want to be a I, negative I, no, hater, no, no. do you know what I mean? <laughs> but but like, you, I, think, I think every time you and I talk about M, this conversation, this type of conversation always happens because you're not hating on him, but you, I think you, do you know what I feel? I feel like you're disappointed yeah. in Eminem. I feel like, it's like I feel like yeah. you think he. I I don't know if this is true or maybe this is subconscious, but we we've talked about him a number of times, and I'm always on him side, and you know maybe it's like rose tinted glasses or something, <laughs> but you always have this like it comes across like um like disappointed in one of your children kind of thing. Yeah, no, like, I, I he could have right. been better. Like he could have like you know he could have done this. He could, yeah. and he did, and then it just went. Oh, like just flat, and that and that's what that's what comes across. I guess my point is this: you're right, relevance and and what do you say, recognizability is two different things. He could have been mm. relevant if they had done it right. He still has the opportunity to do so. This is not becoming like you, no, you're M's <laughs> review show. Yeah, no, you're, you're you're right though. Like I, I think because see, this is the this is the actual truth. I remember being Alex's age. I remember running into Nir, my boy Nir's room. I actually had lunch with him a few weeks ago. It was amazing. We found our old business cards that we made with paper and we laminated them with sticky tape. <laughs> so we, buy, but we had so little money, we put both of our numbers on the same card. And uh, yeah, so I remember like running into his room with the tape. Everybody in those days had these big hi-fis mm -hmm. and if the speakers were detachable, you were like a god. And we would like, I ran in there and I remember like opening the eject button throwing the tape in and being like, yo, listen to this. It was like out of a movie. Like mm. it was like out of these old cliche nighty movies. I was like, I need to hear this guy. This is before we even knew he was white or anything like that. He just started the record with, hi kids, do you like violence? Do you want to see me stick nine inch nails through each one of my eyelids? I was like, no, I mean, 
That's just mad. That is mad. Well, I mean, the the, the Ghetto Boys kind of touched on it, but we didn't know the Ghetto Boys in those days. And that's the kind of stuff that the, like the crazy rock, like Pantera type. Yeah, yeah. You know, went along that side of vibes. So, so yeah, I think, I think in my mind, I always hoped that he would take his place. And he, he is like, his lyrical ability and his delivery ability will always be that good. But I think what Eminem reveals, what Eminem's career has revealed is if you want to be a complete rapper, how many skills you need to be, not just not need to have, not just in terms of as an artist, but who you are to society Culturally. and what you represent to the culture. Yeah. And that's the reason why I, I think Jay remains the best because yeah. Jay's, Jay put out verses, Jay put out a verse right now on, um, Pusha T's album, which by the mm. way, I'm starting to feel so far remains my favorite rap album of the year. Even, I mean, I love Kendrick's album mm. and I love, I even like Drake's album, et cetera, et cetera. And Cole and them and his crew did a great job, but Pusha T's album was incredible. And Jay sounded incredible on that. Speaking of which, Pharrell brought out both of them uh, at a show recently, right? Who? Uh, Pharrell brought out both um, Malice and um, Pusha. Pusha. Mm. Good. I didn't know. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Because Pusha's touring, so. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah, and then, uh, uh, and I think Justin Timberlake was on that same bill where he did the bad dancing. Have you seen that? No. Okay, just just Google that. We won't get into it. It's nice. just like Justin Timberlake does some weird dancing, and now it's become a meme. And you know the reaction, not the reaction, but the uh, copy. What's that um, feature where you copy someone or you, where you can sing along? What's that feature? Oh, when called? you do it. Like, yeah, uh, like you do yeah, it. You do it. So you, you do got it, like, like Justin Timberlake screen and watching. Oh yeah, when you like yeah, remix yeah, it yeah, side yeah, by yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like other people like doing his dance, just taking the mick out of him, so it's become a meme. Oh, but by I the way, by the it. way, anybody who wants to make memes, your dreams have now been fulfilled. Your memes have now been fulfilled, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Because this morning I was watching Omarion versus Mario oh, sidestep, mm. and there's a point where I mean, this is really sad to be honest, but basically Mario did to Omarion what Jadakiss did to Dipset. I mean, what the locks did to Dipset. Like, it was a bloody murder from the beginning. Omarion did say all the way through, I can't hear myself, I can't hear myself, but that's no excuse for not being able to sing. His his vocal performance was terrible, and his choices, the choices he made, I mean, he was lying on his back, grinding with the, the mic stand, and there was a point where... And I'm not joking. And this is going to go viral because I'm, I'm about this culture. There's a point where he brings his brother down who's DJing for him. They get two slices of watermelon and they start eating the watermelon as if they are yeah. in the yeah. relevant same part of a yeah, female, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And it is such a low. It's such a low. And at the end of it, he's like, ladies, if you've got the right pH balance, make some oh noise. God. I mean, he was just... <laughs> Come he on, just man. he just died he just it was terrible so there's gonna be so many memes i know you guys haven't seen it yeah, and i, I, and, I and i wouldn't even say take time out of your day because it's not it's, it, not it's you saw with, with dipset and locks you saw dipset trying and you just saw locks be even greater yeah. whereas when amarian's trying it's just like watching a car crash mm. yeah I've di- i dipped in and out of it like whilst it was live and mario has always been a superior vocalist to amarian anyway yeah. so that one was expected, but oh. if it's that bad, then yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, I kind of want to watch it just for that, but I just don't want to. You know, <laughs> what I'll tell you what justifies watching it is, you know, I always thought of Mario as a, like a, he had parameters around him, like he what he's never going to be like one of the the greats. He's greats, not going to be. Do usher, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah he's not going to be Usher. Exactly, brilliant, exa- better example than what I was going to say. Exactly, he's not going to be Usher, but <laughs> he's, but vocally he's still incredible. He sounds yeah. like. He's, in fact, I would even say that he sounds better. He sounded better live than even on his records, which is rare because I saw that with, I, I mean, okay. So obviously I used to go to R. Kelly concerts before we knew what we knew about him. He was incredible. Mary's incredible and Craig David are incredible. Mm. But so I would say he was in that category of mm. people where you hear him sing live and you're like, my goodness, this man is so, so gifted. So yeah. Anyway, there's gonna be a, lot, a bunch of memes there. Let's let's uh, let's move on. Well, oh, that, and that finally, shout out to Pharrell. Speaking of Pharrell, yeah, yeah. just got this position as creative director, of chief brand officer for the Doodles NFT project. Chief brand officer. So we'll be expecting some cool 
music projects? Yeah, so he will serve as an executive producer on um, an album of Doodles inspired music. Nice. And it'll be called Doodle Records Volume 1. So that'll be cool. And it'll be released in partnership with Columbia Records. Do you, do you know what's right. weird as well? I just had this thought because you showed me the Doodles promo video for mm. Doodles 2. Yeah. And compared to V Friends 2, it's lame. And I'll tell you why. Yeah, because I the agree. animation is in the same ballpark as V Friends. Mm -hmm. And this is not because Gary's our friend's got nothing to do with that. But the characters in V Friends are rooted in certain morals, but, ethics, right. lifestyles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar to like how Mr. Men had Mr. This and Mrs. Yeah. That. But then behind those characters and behind those morals and ethics is a principal, a Wizard of Oz style character, which is Gary himself, who mm. birthed those morals to those characters yeah. who then expressed them to the people. So when you look at Doodles, like we, you were, we were watching the cartoon mm -hmm. before Alex and I, and I was like, it's good animation, but I don't want to own anything. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want mm. the, I don't want the jacket button or the, the, the playing card or the whatever, mm. whatever. Whereas if, if, you know, Gary's got the Uno cards, but if he was to release like a deck of playing cards, well, I don't play cards that often, but I would want to own them because I know that if I do ever play cards at home, I'd rather do it with V friends mm -hmm, playing cards. Then, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man, yeah. I think I think I think as this also plays out, and now that we do see a future for Web three coming out of this like crypto winter that we're in, I think Gary's going to become like number one. And I think just on crypto alone, based on the fact that he did ninety one million top line with his first launch, he'll do he'll do it in the next two three years. He'll do a billion just on on crypto. Yeah, I want to see what I w actually it'd be interesting to see what Cristiano Ronaldo does. And like, you know, just kind of just now, now you're looking at, so when we were talking about Snoop and M, like Pharrell to me is a smart play yeah, because he's in the culture, he's creative, he's cool, he's a little bit different, he's wacky, he's futuristic in his thinking. He's had the success music, with BBC and Ice he's had it, Right, exactly. Right, exactly. So, so all of those components make sense. And mm. that's a long term thinking play in my mind. There was also an ape there as well, right? In, in his world. Bathing, bathing ape, ape was his bathing coding ape. line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so that's a long-term play. So it'd be interesting. I think even Cristiano Ronaldo's got that vibe about him. Mm. Not the same creativity, mm. but in terms of the appeal and and somewhat diversity in what he's he does. He's just a sports superstar. There's nothing. There's nothing human about him. Right. In fact, if anything, he comes across as above human. He's he's like he's like Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan. He's an yeah, alien. But, yeah. but he's he's been like putting out like his documentary. Have you seen that? The yeah, I watched that. That that shows a different side to him. And I think mm -hmm. the way people respond to someone like Cristiano Ronaldo and Pharrell and you know that's more interesting in terms of a long play partnership. Mm. Then, I, I, then, then I'm, what I'm Snoop biased. and M did. Then uh, what yeah. Snoop and M then did. what Snoop and M did. But yeah. I still th I I think that that, that Gary is going to oh, be... Oh, sorry. So what, let me sorry, let me make it yeah. clear. I'm not saying... I'm actually excluding Gary from what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. Gary will do that no matter what. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. that's interesting. But it was, it, it's going to be interesting to see Gary and Cristiano Ronaldo and Pharrell, like these proper, proper names mm. that and how it attaches for the future, like the long term, in comparison to what Snoop and Emma have just but done. If you look at Gary's machine and Gary's, like Gary Vaynerchuk's, if you look at his machine and his his brand and where he started, he didn't, he wasn't like the world's best football player and then went into Web 3. He was Web 1, Web 2, now he's Web 3. Gary Vaynerchuk is the CEO of Web 3. Yeah. Like he's the Basically. president of the United States of crypto and Web 3. He just is because... His start, you can trace it all the way back to videos on camcorders. You can yeah, see him literally. dominate every single platform. He delivers on his promises. He basically institutionalized the utility part because we still don't know what utility you get other than some IP with, you know, bored apes and stuff like that. Whereas with Gary's, you're going to get a chance to meet him, which was popular, something that human beings wanted to do before he even launched mm. NFTs. People wanted to get time with him. So I think... I think he's going to be the he's going to be the one and it sounds biased because it's me saying it but like objectively speaking if I didn't know Gary from a hole in the wall but as a brand guy just looking at it objectively I'm like he's number 1 now and he's probably going to continue to be number 1 and the more people that play underneath him the Snoops the M's the Pharrells the Cristianos I don't know Rock Kevin Hart let it be whoever it is is only going to push the top of the mountain mm. higher and he's still going to be that guy it's on top of it all. because he's the individual, whereas all these guys are doing partnerships with 
um, institutions, mm. right? Mm. But he's the, he's, he's the individual person that's the institution, whereas the institution is the institution. Like the name is Doodle, not mm -hmm. a guy. Gary is the equivalent, obviously bigger, but he's the guy. It, like you can put a face and a name to an individual and any partnership that comes with it is attached to that face and name. Whereas a partnership with Cristiano Ronaldo and Binance is with Binance. Binance. Not with CZ. But the when you, the so, so that's the difference. Oh, no, no, I'm like agreeing with your point. Yeah. And then, and then you take, and like exactly what you said, you take it back and you say, well, he's just been about this life. He's mm. been about technology. He's been about entrepreneurship. But because he's like an individual face and name, you can recognize it more. But and I think that's important. This is, this is the point I was about, about to make is that it's individual. So when you look at Christina, Chris, if you look at Ronaldo and Binance, or you look at Pharrell and Doodle, or you look at Snoop and M and Bored Ape, there's immediate dilution because you're talking about a minimum of two brands trying to occupy mm. the same amount of headspace. Mm -hmm. With Gary, you don't care whether it's on Ethereum, Solano, uh, V Friends, the book thing that he did, book tokens, whatever yeah. it is. It doesn't matter. The, at the top of the mountain, there's one person that's asking for all the attention. With Binance, there's two. Mm. And one of the things that I've preached many times before is that if you throw somebody one beach ball, they'll catch one beach ball. If you throw mm -hmm. them two, they might drop two. When you get to the top, when you look at the brand values and the core values, it ends with one person, which is Gary. Whereas with Binance, and also, by the way, we don't even think about the Binance and Cristiano Ronaldo relationship as a forever relationship. Gary's relationship is a forever relationship with his people in his community. Cristiano's contract, whatever that is, well, you know has it's a, a multi-year. It's going to stop can, at some yeah, point. Yeah, they're going right. to. They can go. Like Snoop can go anywhere. Pharrell can go anywhere. Right. Yeah, they can it's all basically, leave, yeah. it's almost like a job. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's yeah, just yeah, a job. yeah. 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 And that's the danger of constructions, and that's the reason why Gary is going to be number one is because he he built his Web three offering from his Death Star, which is the VaynerX group, mm. Mm. as opposed to having to collaborate with people. Now there are other blockchains and stuff that are plugging mm. into what he's doing. There are manufacturers, you know, if you look on uh, our friend Andy Cranach's, uh, what, how do you spell his Instagram? K-R-A-I-N-A-K. -A 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 yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, if you go to his Instagram, you'll see like they've just doing like, they've got like food trucks where they're giving away like V Friends t-shirts and stuff in New York City. It's grassroots. Go ahead. K-R-A-I-N-A-K. -A -A yeah, perfect. That's exactly what we said. And mm -hmm. New York responds to that. New York responds to street level on the block promotion, yeah, yeah. you know, giving away t-shirts to the lady who yeah, works on yeah. the metro, giving mm -hmm. away, you know, caps and stuff like that to the local pizza delivery guy. That makes a difference in New York. And with New York being what it is to culture, it will mm. then spread from there. Best, I'm going to call this one. This is going to be the best episode since we kicked, since we created Algo, aside from the first one that, uh, that we yeah, did. That, yeah, that the one that I was not. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, the Inception the one's always going to be special. Similar theme, <laughs> right? The Inception birthday party is always going to be special, but it's going it's to be the one we yeah, do on Saturday yeah, is going to yeah. be as good. All right, next, what are we talking about? Let's get into content, content recommendations. Yeah. Flo's going to be very happy, by the way, with this episode. Yeah, I know. Big shout out to Flo. <laughs> yeah, so Flo is like, I guess, because nobody knows who he is, which is kind of like part of it, but he's kind of like the guy that uh, in Mork and Mindy that Mork goes awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's like mm. the awesome character. He's always texting me, giving me feedback on the show. So yeah, he's going to be happy with this chunky episode with all these great insights okay next up <laughs> he's wilson from home improvement <laughs> oh yeah the guy on the <laughs> oh on that's the even better the all references that alex doesn't get i know yeah, yeah. that's what i wanted to do so okay let's get into <laughs> content recommendations yeah and uh we spoke about this now for the last couple of days which is snoop did a uh comedy special yeah on effing well, around effing it's the effing around comedy special i think it's for netflix is a joke or i think it's for that yeah that series um, where he got together a bunch of comedians and he's going to read them out. Yeah. Yeah. He's sitting inside the stage, just, uh, indulging in his, uh, favorite in his, pastime. in his favorite pastime. And he just gets a bunch of people to come on stage. So you've got Guy Tori, um, who's a great comedian, Melanie Cormaco. I don't really know her that well. Actually. Carmacho, isn't it? Carmacho. Yeah. I yeah. don't really know much about her. You've got Cat Williams. You've got. Mike Epps, you've got D. Ray Davis, and you've got Donnell Rawlings. Mm. Each one does probably about seven or eight minutes. Yeah. Give or take, something like that. Yeah. It was good. It was really good. Then he, they come off stage, they sit down with him for about three or four minutes, and they just have a quick chat. It's not really an interview, it's mm. just a quick chat. 
sometimes it's a little bit about how they first met or it's just like you know just a bit of like banter but for me like i mean for me stand out i mean donnell donnell rawlings has always been great mm. but he wiped the floor with everyone yeah, Isn't Charlemagne the God is smart at that. By the way, and he's finding an old tweet exchange between me and Charlemagne. But there's a, yeah, he's always been right about saying that like Donnell Rawlings is the best in the world. Obviously, like because he's next to who took the crown from like the Priors and the, Richard Priors and Eddie Murphy's. Like he stood next to Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's always going to occupy a different space in in society and in mainstream culture. But Donnell Rawlings is as talented in the same way that Neil Brennan is as talented yes. mm. because effectively they all share the same DNA, but there's just a certain special additional gift that, that Chappelle's got. But in terms of funniness, it's, uh, it's incredible. So Donnell did incredible. DeRay Davis did incredible. And Mike Epps did incredible. And I mean, all of them all were of them good, were great, I would yeah. say. Um, even the girl was very funny and Guy as well was, was quite good. But the... Um, yeah, it's it's well worth watching. Definitely go watch it. And it's nice because, you know, it's it's a little bit of a like a, a hood variety show. It's a very like yes. West Coast variety mm -hmm. show where they play like mm -hmm. a couple of soul records, bit of Anita Baker. He drops a few verses from his own records, but over like the original samples. It's a fun, actually, I would say, and I, this is because how I experienced it, but if you're at home by yourself, it's a great watch. That's you know what I mean? basically how I watched it. Everyone was asleep in the house. Yeah. And I checked it on. D-Ray Davis was very 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 big oh, i mean he's incredible. always been funny but i feel like he was like no i can't do anything average here wasn't he in that movie that uh, idris elba just did uh um, the very popular one that jay-z produced uh or was that dion cole i don't know no it's maybe not, another comedian it's not d ray davis it might, i don't know who it was but it's the western one right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i can't remember because these guys movie, were so though. yeah they were so movie. like they were so uniformed up costumed up that i can't I can't pull faces. I can't, I can't out remember my head. his name. I know. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. It was not yeah. D. Ray Davis. Yeah. I mean, D. Ray Davis has been in a bunch of like movies, but but I think I think on part like if you look at like Donnell Rawlings, always great, and he basically just was great on that stage. There's no doubt about it. Mm. But I think when you look at D. Ray Davis, he's great normally. Like he's very 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 good normally. But I think he just his improvement between what he is normally, which is always very very high standard. To what he did on Snoops, that that difference made him really special. I, I felt, on that I felt stage. the same about all three of them. I felt and like Mike I, as well. I felt like Mike Epps was as funnier than I've ever seen him. He and he's great. funny. His bass is funny. Donnell was on a different level. And I've seen him live. I actually parted with him in London. His his bass is higher than anyone's on the stage, even yeah. Cat Williams. And yeah, Cat. I yeah. There's. I think I'm. I'm waiting for Cat's time where he goes back to. I'm waiting for a different time cat, in cats. Cat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's good, but he's just he's he he's he's not. Yeah, he's good. He's very good, but he's like he's not like the classic Cat Williams that 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 I fell in love with in the early 2000s. And so, but he, I'm sure he'll go back there. I'm sure he'll have a moment where he does it. What was interesting about that as well is it was filmed around the time that um, that Chris Rock hit Chappelle. Uh, sorry, Chris Rock hit. Um, no, Will Smith hit Will Chris Smith, Rock. Yeah. So that became like a running thing. And I don't think mm. the Chappelle thing had happened at that point. I don't think so. Yeah, it hadn't. Oh, do you know what's so funny? Just a quick one. You know, David Letterman's um, My Next Guest is. Will's on that. Yeah. But he's on there pre-doing pre, mm. pre -doing it. Yeah, yeah. And they, mm. they write it up. They say this was before the, the, <laughs> the, the, they had to the Academy it, Awards, yeah. the, the, whatever it is. Mm. So yeah, so that, that's a good recommendation. I, it's, not, it's not very long. It's, it's pretty short because each yeah. one only does seven or eight minutes and it's well worth it's well worth watching yeah my content recommendation too for sure great and also my other content recommendation um if it's my turn to give one well there's only two there's, left in yeah, there's two left. the beyonce record yeah. yeah yeah unbelievable what's the name of the record again uh, break, my, break soul. my soul yeah why, unbelievable why do you record. like it I'm, I'm not saying it's bad like i love it but why do you like it so much um, why did you ha why you why did you feel so compelled to make such a big deal of that specific record because i'm from manchester fair okay mm. so i grew up around house music and then it's not long you don't have to go down the house music route too far to get into the a particular lifestyle scene in new york and chicago and it's yeah. that music mm. it's that it's that classic like new york chicago house voguing type of yeah, house yeah, music yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uplifting. Right. It's light. It's repetitive. It's yeah. The, the the and what I've always liked about 
vocal soul, soulful house is the fact that the most recognizable thing about it is you've got a repetitive, uplifting, uh, typically a chorus. Yeah. And that is that re repetition and uplifting thing is the thing that those communities, those minority communities, whatever their whatever their circumstances or, or lifestyle choices are, they need to hear that. Mm. And that's really, really good, especially if you come from a place like Detroit, which again, if you imagine like the relationship they had, there was the Motown glory days, there was the, there was the industrial era, and then they really hit a low. Yeah. And then in the 80s as well, New York also kind of really hit a low in the crack era. And so we imagine what, what that music meant to people that mm. were absolutely downtrodden, not least black mm. people, but it was, that's why I love that music. I think it's just uh, incredible. And so for Beyonce to release a record like that and the execution of it is just really, really incredible. Yeah. And the guys at Group Chat as well on the Group Chat podcast, they also talked about a couple of episodes ago um, about how if you leave the United States, what we think of as like today's hip hop, like the little babies and all that, that's not the music that everybody listens to worldwide. Like when we went to yeah. Berlin, or yeah. when did we um, go? We went somewhere Munich, in Germany. Right? We yeah, went to yeah. Munich. We couldn't find hip hop. And that's yeah, the I'm second sure. That's the second hip hop market of the world or third hip hop market third, of the world. Yeah. And we were in their second or third city. We couldn't find it. So we, you, you've got that element to it. Like most people around the world, like up tempo, mm -hmm. most people can find it easier to get into a 123, 122 and up to 135 BPM. They find it easier to get along to that to that music. So um so yeah, it is really much a really global popular sound. Yeah, it's a and great, I love it's it. Great, it's and a great her vocals record. are incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a great it's a great record. It, it's a good song. And uh, the Drake album as well. Like Drake's got a couple of good next, records on there. That's your next content recommendation, right? I think yes. His face. No, no, no. On no, the I edit, go to your face when I said the Drake. I record. think he has some good song. Like I don't rate the whole album. Mm. I think he has. I mean, fair enough. He tried something different. I just don't see Drake like that. The the, the, mis the mistake is what he's done is he's he's taken on his last album, which I've already forgotten the name of, but on his last album he did all the certified lover boy. Yeah, certified lover boy. Oh no, he had some big records on that though, didn't he? Yeah, he, yeah, he has a few good songs on there as well. So he, he had the record with Future and all that, which although yeah. people said it's for the clubs, I thought it was good fun. But that record leaned a lot on that sound that his camp do, which is it sounds like there's a ship that's gone into water and sent out these sonar radars. And then all you hear back is like whales. Like it's just that weird off, like weird mm. broken sound. It leaned too much on that. And this one leans too much on the up-tempo stuff mm -hmm. from Take exactly. Care. Exactly. Which makes sense because Black Coffee produced a lot of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But y y to only have, you know, two, maybe three braggadocious records, which is Sticky and the one with massive. 21. Massive. And oh, Massive. And Jimmy Cooks. Massive is, yeah, mass oh, yeah, Massive. Yeah, so, so I'm saying 2.5 braggadocious yeah. records. Jimmy Cooks is a gangster record, which I yeah, love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then you've got, you, but then the rest of it is just up tempo. But mm -hmm. again, Drake, like Cristiano Ronaldo, is a global brand. And he'll pull a good amount of revenue from U.S. and Canadian touring, but he'll do a lot overseas. And yeah. I think and he's I just think putting these big up-tempo records for those markets, and I especially as we come out of COVID. Well, you got you got summer coming up and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly summer. And I think a lot of DJs will find ways to remix that and stuff at the clubs. And like, Absolutely. fair enough, we'll see what people do. But I, I'm not going to be sitting at home listening to that album by myself. No, you're going to be like touring Europe, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's the really good point, though, is that it's not a sit at home yeah, album. I'm not like and most people when they get a Drake album like we did with J albums 20 years ago is you like oh so, so funny the other day I was like I was, well last night I spoke to Vic I was like I'm about to watch um Donnell Rawlings mm -hmm. and I made my phone call to Vic before the Donnell Rawlings set started because like anything I, or when if I need to talk I'll just do all that before the set starts because you create space for artists like Donnell Rawlings you know he's going to murder it so it's like let me be present when I consume it you do the same for Jay back mm. in the day when um, Volume One and all these records came out. It's like I, I can't have. I mean, we didn't have mobile phones really like that in mm. those days that would be ringing every ten seconds. But you make a moment, and when you make a moment to consume a Drake record, and you do that at home or in the car or on certain speakers, unfortunately, just being by yourself is not the way to listen to this Drake record. Mm. I agree. You need to yeah. if 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 they just debuted it 
I mean, you can't debut a record in the clubs because it goes on these streaming networks first. So unfortunately, if it's a record for the people and for the masses, and most people rip off the plastic seal, the equivalent on Spotify and listen to it themselves, you're not going to get the album. That's why Drake's out there right now saying like, you'll get it. Mm. You'll get it once you're out and about this summer, once you go to Mykonos, once you go to Ibiza, London, Miami, mm. Vegas. And, and again, you let a few guys, popular guys remix it. You're going to understand what's going on. Fair I, enough. Think, I think the remix thing is a really important point. Yeah. That, that, I think that's going to change the perception of Drake and that album. What if he released a yeah. remix album? Do you remember people used to do that? Yeah, he might do. Might do. They re released an album yeah. which is just all the remixes. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Why not? Why not? Why not? But but maybe maybe he'll just get the people to do it, like the DJs to do it yeah. or the producers to do it. Or maybe he won't get them to do it, but it'll just happen organically. Who knows? I don't know, who knows? But I think that remix like, that remix thing is is uh is interesting. So that's it. What about you, Alex? Oh I thought well, on the um, penultimate episodes. Recommendations. There's a new movie on Netflix, the Adam Sandler movie. Hustle. 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 I've not seen it. Have you seen I watched it? it? It's pretty good. Oh, good don't movie. give anything away. But so people say the three best sport, uh, basketball movies are Space Jam, Coach Carter, and now this like Coach Carter. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, right? I know the film. Yeah, but I watched it. <laughs> I watched it as well. Who, who has said that? That's one of the top three. That, that's basketball like movies. if you look like in ter in terms. Of, yeah. What about White Men Can't Jump? I don't even know what that. But that's not really I've never sports even heard movie. of that's that. Just <laughs> stuff, yeah. I've yeah. never even heard of I that. I would consider that better than Coach Carter as a basketball movie. Fair enough. I don't know. I, that's wow. just what I <laughs> anyway. But it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's it looks good. amazing. It's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. I saw I mean, the last Adam Sandler movie where he was. Um, Cut gems. Yeah. yeah, he was a jewelry dealer in yeah. New York. That was very good. I thought his acting it was incredible. The film really stressed me out Very all the way through the though. film. What, Uncut Gems? Yeah, just because his acting and the storyline was so good and it was so beautifully shot and directed that I felt I felt the tension that I think mm. the producer wanted you to feel. Do you know Adam Fair Sandler? Is, yeah. um, Adam Sandler's got skills, man. Like, yeah. like I know he plays the, the idiot and whatever. Yeah, but, can, yeah. But when he when he pulls it out, like when he pulls out his like real acting skills. Mm. Mm, good pause. Uh, <laughs> Like like uncut gems and stuff. He can really he can really like do a really really good job. Yeah. But he's he's in he, that's him. He's movies production writing yeah. everything. Like he's that's the only thing he should be doing. So I'm looking forward to watching that. I think Kevin Hart's got a movie out tonight as well. Really? Yeah, on Netflix. Do some, I keep seeing Kevin Hart everywhere on my Instagram because on because Ad he's Adobe. on Chief Adobe, Adobe, yeah. yeah with yeah. Yes Island. But like every ad I see is him. He's the chief island officer of Yas yeah. Island. Yeah. Like yeah. He's yeah, mad yeah, in yeah. It. It's like, it, that's all I see of Yas Island now. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's Fair enough. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very safe campaign, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, Go goofing like, around, something doesn't go the way that he thought. He talks to some people off camera because they're not necessarily like... He's like running with what he thinks it should mm. be and then he's trying to get some validation it's cool but it's uh you know it's I safe I, I, yeah, yeah i don't wanna, i don't want to diss kevin hart because i think he's i really really like him but that's a bit of a shtick for him and mm -hmm. it's like will smith did the same shtick as like a similar kind of you know it kind of gets a little bit like okay I mean, we know that now no i like it but because i like his acting though i've, I've never been a fan of his stand-up per mm. se but his he's a bloody good actor yeah he's very good in, his yes, interviews are brilliant his mm. his, his podcast no, no. Yeah. oh i think you've put me onto it before yeah. it's, it's, because you well, said he, he had ha russell on right and i heard that one he had russell i mean he has basically every great comedian mm. Mm. <laughs> and, like he's just had Atheon crockett who is amazing, oh, as amazing. Well. but um but it, the, the, the podcasts are fine but yeah as an actor he's amazing as a stand-up he's average but i think just that that little thing that he does i th i feel it's a bit of too much of a shtick now mm. you know it's like oh, come on guys like no okay well you're kevin hart that shit that's not going to happen to I you because you're Kevin Hart. And now he's bigger than that shtick, you know? If it works, it works, right? Yeah, like I there's guess, a reason yeah. why he's doing it. Yeah, maybe. I'm also, I'm also really keen to see, and I've not seen it yet, um, Godfrey the Comedian, who we had on the Sugar Hill Gang podcast. And, and I'm a fan of his period. Yes. Like he's just incredibly funny. He's, he's an, he's an all-rounder that I think, for me, Godfrey is like the, he's got like elements of Jamie Foxx to him in terms of like mm. his gift. And uh, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him on Andrew Schultz's show, Flagrant. Oh with, yeah, um, you said he's mm, on Akash right. Singh. Yeah, I don't know if the long form's out yet, but I'll definitely watch that. And in fact, I've got nine odd hours to kill on a flight to Bali, so that's probably one of the things I'll watch because Godfrey is brilliant, and he's and quick. he's also politically yeah. charged as he, well. Yeah, so he, like, yeah, he's quick. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah, he, 
and he's very opinionated. So I think the combination wow. of him, Akash, and Andrew Schultz will be a good That'd be combination. Yeah. All of who, well, Godfrey we had in the show, Andrew showed love, gave me tickets to his show in New York, and Akash occasionally on DM, try and work on some bits, maybe, maybe not. And I want to give a shout as well to uh, to Drama and to D and to Anand just for some bits and pieces, some love that they've been showing recently. So uh, big up to you guys uh, over at Group Chat. If you want to know what, at least what my favorite podcast is, uh, outside this one, is the Group Chat podcast. So give that mm. a quick listen. And rest in peace to the All, All In, in podcast. In. Yeah, but do you think that's done? Done like that's they ha they haven't done any official announcement, right? Yeah, right. I uh, no, see uh, apparently I they were saying that Jason Kalkanis did a tweet that said, "Oh, I tried my best or whatnot." So yeah, for those of you who don't yeah. have the context on this, the All In podcast is uh, four venture capitalists that are all very successful. A couple of them have hit billionaire status. They've got some interesting backgrounds. One's early stage uh, employee at Facebook, outspoken. Somebody else was one of the founders of PayPal. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Um, one of them was early stage angel on Uber, the other ones in biotech. So looks like they had the most incredible podcast that started, mm -hmm. you know, peak 2020 madness. And they've just done a conference in Miami. And you'd think that this would be the time where they revel in their glory. Double down. And they, they, they turn this all in property into a fully fledged media asset, but it looks like it's gone away. Uh, hopefully not. Here's what I do know. Whether it's gone away or it's not, it will come back. In some form or another. No, it'll, I think it'll come back in its traditional form. Right. I think whatever needs to be worked out will get worked out. And because they've spent so much time calling each other besties, or some of them have, and because they've spent so many times ending their episode with, I love you guys, they're going to have to look back at all the times that they said and did that and mm. be like, well, if we don't, we're just like hypocrites. So they're going to yeah. have to work it out. Assuming, and these are guys that move in circles as well. You yeah, know? assuming that there's an internal beef, like who knows what it is. Yeah, yeah. it could just right? be anything, yeah. They could just yeah. like, take a break. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we've got midterms coming up fourth quarter in the mm -hmm. U.S. Not we, but, you know, but the world yeah. and the U.S. They're, has they're probably going to want to have a voice on that. No, definitely want to have a voice mm -hmm. on that. Anyway, yeah. Because right? whoever's going to replace Biden is going to. He just yeah. came out and said it, didn't he? <laughs> I, I, no, but I mean, <laughs> it's 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 the, it's the weakest. It's the weakest combo I've seen in in my. Like adult post teenager life, like. A guy who doesn't speak too much and makes mm. a lot of fumbles, literally fumbles, falls off his bike. And the other one you And a vice see. president we've just not even seen. Like, I see, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just a bit of a weird one. So anyway. Cool. And, and enough on of a that. good note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, that's it. That's everything. We've, have you got any shout outs that you want to give? I've got you one. You just gave a few, but. I mean, I've got, I would like to shout out the every single person who is responded to the birthday party saying that they can't make it that they can make it that has mm. signed up that's bringing friends anybody who's kind of like shown love um and he, i'm so it's interesting like i've already made the birthday video for to post on the day of because i know we're going to be really busy on the day of my birthday mm -hmm. so yeah i was in that video i i and i'll say it again now in case people don't catch either or but like yeah i'm just really grateful to everybody in the like last year who's just showed mad love because this is the last podcast that we're doing before my birthday. Of course, we have to move Helen High Water to do a podcast after the birthday because that's the last one that we're all going to record together. All of us are heading off to, to different places. And um, yeah, so we, there will be one more podcast, but mm -hmm. I guess this one being the pre-birthday one, like big shout out to, to everybody in the last 12 months who's just shown love in the last, the last three years because we've, we've, had it, we've not had it easy, but we've definitely had it better than most and uh so i'm grateful for that so just big all generic shout out to everybody uh, just to be clear it's not going to be our last podcast <laughs> <laughs> it's our last podcast like this in person our last podcast together yeah, yeah 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 no I'm, uh all three yeah yeah after, i'm sure you, after you, the next you two one. uh yeah but i'm sure you can jump in on zoom every now and then if you're not like no i, I think no, he's I'm gonna, i'll never see you guys again no here's here's, here's, <laughs> we'll here's see you in a month yeah. here's what yeah. i want this is what you guys have got to figure out so this is, I would like, it. I, the podcast should continue to be all three of us. It's not that I'm the one that says that that's what it is, but mm. that's that, that's what I think is the best. And then also, um, we just do it virtually whilst we're in Bali. Flo already texted and said that podcast is RIP. It's not going to happen whilst we're traveling. I'd, so just to prove him wrong, <laughs> we have to do it. And then, um, so yeah, we'll get, you know, I've got my mic, you've got your mic. You said it online now, we have to do no, it. Yeah. You know what? We say a lot of things, but <laughs> that's I, true. I, 
Flo, Flo doesn't exist. Flo's just a voice in his head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Flo, so no, I, I know you exist, yeah. Flo, but I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> no, so no, so like that. That's um. So so I think you know, obviously we're going to continue to do it. Alex is going to continue to be the producer of the mm -hmm. agency and the academy. So yeah, we just got to keep pumping them out. Um, but but I will tell both of you this that you both basically raised the standard very, very high on this one. And I'm sure the audience is going to notice it as well. So this is the new base standard because if I was objective and I wasn't me, I would listen to this podcast and be like, that's actually some of the most brilliant like conversations that I've heard. And you guys just smashed it on this episode. So like, that's the baseline. That's the baseline. Cause this was like, I was sat here listening to you guys being like, God damn, like these are some phenomenal points. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you guys made today. Just made them up on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got one shout out. It's actually a personal shout out. Um, so yesterday I went to the first sports awards at my son's school. Huge. Mm. Can we get uh, an air horn? We'll <laughs> 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 find one. Yeah, this yeah. is big, what he's about to tell <laughs> yeah, you. I know. So, I, he told me this morning. Yeah. It so is so is their first like sports awards. Like literally it's like an awards ceremony for everyone that's involved in the different sports and sports Wait, teams at his school. At your son's school, in a school. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's part of a number of sports teams, rugby, football, basketball, swimming. And there's a couple that he couldn't join just because of time. Flex. So, <laughs> flex. Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, this is my son, man. It's a proud dad <laughs> moment. But anyway, so like sure. all the kids that are involved in the, 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 the sports, are, you know, invited mm -hmm. with the parents. They come up, they get called. Their names are on the big screen. They all get given a mm. certificate. Not like a participation certificate. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're actually in the team contributing to the matches and winning mm, and stuff. Yeah. So they did that. And then after each category, like football, they all went off. And then the, the coach goes, right, we're going to give some awards. Coaches player of the year, um, player of the year, and most improved. So in a one, most improved for football and most improved for swimming. So two two trophies. The other Huge. two categories that he was in, there was no individual trophy. So he won the only two that he could he could win and he was the only kid if i'm not mistaken and if anyone's watching this from the school <laughs> i apologize but i believe he's the only kid that won two trophies mm. uh, nice huge but it's everyone great. did amazing everyone like that mm. school is great. no they didn't <laughs> yeah they didn't. Stop Stop the rest school is great Stop no the rest right. of them <laughs> are, the rest of them are losers in a one Everything that he could win, and he won more than everybody else won. This is the problem with participation I culture. Agree. I, I there's, there's, agree. There's, with if, this. It, if it's a meritocracy, and we're going to celebrate this guy winning, he he put more numbers on the board. Everything he could win, he won, and he won more than everybody else. And that's it. You can say what fair, you want fair, as a fair, dad. Fair. Yeah, who has yeah, to go yeah. and pick them up, <laughs> pick the kids up, and stare the other dads in the faces that don't take them to soccer practice or whatever, whatever. You handle that. Mm. But I'm. We are now in a. We're now going back to calling it how it is, and he beat everybody's ass. So good job, Inay. <laughs> if I've got the facts correct, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I have. But any, either way, look, whatever it is, is it was a big moment yesterday. Like you know, we didn't mm. we didn't know what to expect or whatever. It's the first one that they've had, and he just rocked up with the the two trophies, and he's extremely proud. Oh, and in the morning he got a certificate in front of the assembly about contribute like like best PE student or something like that. I don't nice. know something like that. So he had best a best PE he, student. There's not best PE student, but it's like a certificate for PE. Like other kids got for like kindness and this and that oh, and good, the other. Good, good. So it's like a handful of kids that got some certificates and you know an assembly. In the Have morning. you sent the football award to his uncle Neil in China, who's a big football guy? Um, I've not not yet. I've sent it to the families, like yeah. mm. um, Shayla's family and my family, but we will send it around to a few. Yeah, because he'll love that. Yeah, he'll yeah, be absolutely. so happy. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to our, to, to Neil and Vicky in China. Okay, any shout outs on your side? Um, your dad for housing you for free for the last nine months getting, <laughs> you, getting you an internship that led you to meeting all these people and yeah, developing sure, sure. a personal I'll, brand I'll give, a, I'll give a shout out to my dad and Paula for um, my stepmom for having me in Dubai and then also Paula for like technically getting me this internship because otherwise without Paula I wouldn't have met you two mm. and then I'll give a shout out to my brother as well just finished his exams yesterday oh nice mm. Yeah, so that's good. And your mom, who shows love on every single post on my social media that dude, features you. Dude, it's okay. It's Shout not just you. It's everybody. She swipes up to every single post. Yeah, but she yeah. She, she shows I mean, my love. I mean, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, uh, <laughs> she, she doesn't have to do that. Right? <laughs> she like, doesn't. Yeah. No, no, no. Respect to her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah. and speaking of Paula, so she introduced um, my sister to her now husband. Yes. And um, we're all going to Dublin for this wedding. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, shout out to my sister, Sonal, and her husband, Wes, who have just been like heading into Bali this trip, which I'm about to on Tuesday, which is a big trip. They've literally given me the tips of like who some of the managers are at some of the at some of the venues. Uh, Wes literally texted me exactly how much of every item of clothing I need to pack oh, wow. <laughs> based on the fact that they were there because I'm a notorious overpacker mm. and Bali is not the place you want to overpack. Yeah. And then, um, and so yeah, just shout out to both of them and, and also go to Rumor Interiors as well online, R-U-M-A-H Interiors. They're also on Instagram. That's my sister's um, interior, interior design, design company. And obviously she was here before I was. So she she kind of bankrolled the whole setting up of the company. So without her, there'd be no CCA. There'd be no Alex. <laughs> yeah, there'd be no Alex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, the matriarch at the top of all this is my sister. So make sure you follow Rumor Interiors, show them some love uh, and shout out to my parents who've also been helping me work on this party. Um, sending bits and pieces over i also gave them this cough that i have so i feel super bad about oh, no. that really yeah pretty bad pretty bad but i mean there's nothing i can do about yeah. it it just is what it is and um and yeah and shout out to you guys for working super hard all year and putting this incredible party together That's so, so uh, we're gonna have a good time and i'm glad that and, and and well done to you for resting alex because alex just had the booster jab and I, it treated him the I way that got destroyed <laughs> it treated you the way it treated <laughs> me as well <laughs> yeah you're feeling better though now your voice yeah, and everything yeah. you seem okay i i'm just tired but that like you can get i can get through but like the past days i was like dead alex is one japang away from being back to a 10 10 out of 10 that have you ordered it yet i'll <laughs> order sure it. you know you know what just because you mentioned it i'm gonna order it today can i can i just say one <laughs> thing as well and i and I, just, just speaking of food in the city because i ate well and i ate clean at home i had plenty of food at vic's mom's house plenty of food at my own parents house I want to give a shout out to this company. They don't sponsor us, but I just, I can't get over how brilliant they are and how consistent they are. I want to give a shout out to like Go Foods mm. that do Go Greek and Go, Go Pasta. Pasta. Man, the, they've made one mistake in dozens of orders. They just sent me out the wrong dish, mm. but the dish was still delicious. And they were like, do you want to replace it? And I was like, well, I'm super hungry and I'm going to eat it. And I enjoyed it. They've every single dish these guys sell, whether you buy their go organic juices, their go pasta, their go Greek, it is the best, some of the best takeout food in the city. And last night I ordered just a simple spaghetti made perfectly al dente. I had an avocado toast because it was on a combo. The toast came hot. The avocado was super generous. Like it was all fresh and delicious. And they are not sponsors, mm -hmm. but I just want to give them a shower and show them some love because they, what matters to me is just like accuracy and consistency when it comes mm. to like food. They are always accurate aside from that one dish that came wrong, but it's just fine. And, uh, and they're always consistent with their food. So I want to give them a shout out and I'm going to tag them in this and show them some love because whoever's behind that business deserves to grow. All I'm saying mm. is when you do grow, don't mess up and not scale properly and then make all the rest of us OG customers really disappointed. But they're brilliant. So you can find them on, I buy, the, I buy their stuff on Deliveroo. I want to give them a big shout out and shout out to Amongst Few that just did a uh, incredible collab with yep. Ravi and Adidas. Uh, the official t-shirt was a collab with them. Sorry we couldn't make it to the event last night. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just, you know, shout out to our friends Amongst Few. When I wore the Stay Low and Keep Firing jumper in, Ma in Manchester, I went backstage to Russell's. As soon as mm. I walked in, he was like, yo, where'd you get that jumper from? And I was like, oh, um, there's a brand in Dubai that makes it. Uh, and he was like, oh, it's dope. So, yeah, probably have to send him one. Russell. He doesn't listen to the podcast, so. <laughs> yeah. Ru 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 Russell doesn't know Amongst Few? Or? No. Okay, fair. He doesn't know them. Yo, he doesn't know them. I, you know, like this conversation we just had, I, you were making it seem like his last podcast. Well, no, <laughs> it's the penultimate podcast of us together. Yeah, but there's one more. We could have done this on that's the what actual. No, but that's what penultimate <laughs> means. Yeah, I know, but we could have done this on the actual last one. What? As in next week. So he's no, but I'm <laughs> going to forget next week. As soon as this wraps, I'm not going to know what fair, I said until fair. I yeah, hear yeah, the that's, playback, that's the true, final version. Yeah. And also, ne the next one is probably going to be a little bit more leaning on towards what the birthday Part, was. Yeah, and that's stuff. True. yeah, the next one's going to be a birthday and end of season special. Also, it's, yeah. it's going to be tight with you leaving, so it's not going to be like... No, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. In fact, what we'll do is we'll do... Uh, next one will be birthday special, wrapping up the season special, and kind of like greatest hits. Let's do that. 
all the all cool. the fly stuff that we've done in the last 12 months or as, 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 all the fly stuff that we've done this season let's just make it about that so greatest hits we'll give Berus okay. and Travi shout outs and all that yeah, all that everybody. we were doing at the beginning of the season we'll do all that all stuff <laughs> again all right okay we good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it. It. Vic doesn't cool. seem convinced. Vic's like, Vic's like, what did I do this year? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm <laughs> trying to think of the greatest hits. I can think of like one. <laughs> you found uh, no. Pizzeria de Michel, and yeah, I oh, did just oh, send that, you yeah, that. yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andrew good. Schultz is on his honeymoon <laughs> yes, in, um, in Italy. In Italy, I think I assume in Napoli, uh, yes, or whatever, right? Yeah. And he, uh, Alex sent the post of Andrew Schultz going like, "This is the best pizza in the world." And, and he's from New York City as and, well. And yeah. his missus, and like, it's, it is the door in a wall of that pizzeria place. And his wife has just gone to like pick up the takeaway pizza. And this is like a massive yeah. queue of people. So wow. it's, that, it's that pizzeria. <laughs> That's so it funny. looks yeah. really good, honestly. It was good in London. And it was. I haven't was been to the one here even. JBR. Yeah. Oh, no, C- City Walk as well. Oh, yeah, there is City oh, Walk. Really? Yeah. yeah. What's the name of it? L- Lant- Lantica? L- Lantica, Lantica de Pizzeria yeah. de Michel. Yeah. Or but Miguel, you say it now probably, Alex. I don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm not Something Italian. Like Come on. Yeah. <laughs> also, we need to go watch Top Gun. Oh, God, yeah. I need to watch Top Gun 1 and 2. Just watch number one. We'll watch number one individually, and then we'll just go see number two. It's when, supposed to be wicked, right? There's no time. It's not going to happen. Make yeah, time. Make time. D- I'm. F- you make time. <laughs> Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, anyway, for those of you who are listening to the show, hope you enjoyed it. Five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars on Spotify, whether you're watching and listening. YouTube gang, hit that subscribe button. We are growing 10, 20 subscribers a week. I'll take it. Uh, Comments would be appreciated. And uh, hit the notification bell to get this episode first. Likes also help us get discovered. And that's it. Thanks for checking out the best episode of the number one podcast in Dubai, Raj Show. See you on the next episode. Peace.